Hey guys, my name is Rebecca Michael and welcome to Commercial Break, where we bring you all your favorite faces from commercials. I'm live here at thestream.tv with Mike Beatrice in the chat. Hey Mike, what's going on? Hey Rebecca, I am just manning the chat desk, keeping tabs on all of our chat stars, real-time comments and questions and tweets and Instagrams and AOL messages, whatever you got, I am paying attention. Rebecca, I'm very excited about today's guest. Please kick off the show. Well, Mike, today we have uh, somebody who can't seem to get his son to stop using his cell phone internationally, and he can't seem to get his son to stop taking pictures of eggs either. Please welcome Mr. Ken Lerner to Commercial Break. We are so excited to have you here tonight, Ken. Thank you. Welcome My pleasure to, to be studio. here. Um, you are in this huge T-Mobile campaign uh, right now, and you play the dad. And it's about finding your son and, and with your wife, and you guys seem to be really upset with him. Tell us about this parental dilemma. Well, he's a knucklehead who just keeps <laughs> spending money and spending money and doesn't have a good uh, coverage. So he's in Europe traveling around and we have no idea where he is. He won't answer us. And so we're constantly trying to get in touch with him and seeing if we can stop the leakage because he's costing me a fortune. Yes, and every parent just loves that when kids do that. <laughs> Mike, you run up your data by taking pictures of food as well, don't you? Taking pictures of food? Yes, I am the Ansel Adams <laughs> of black and white cheeseburger <laughs> photography. But I can't run up much of a tab at the in and out. Uh, we already have questions. Uh, Ken, our chat stars are excited to have you here. Our first uh, question comes from Binge TV Watcher. Ken, anybody who knows TV knows you're you. Do you still have to audition for commercials, or do they just pick up the phone and say, we want Ken Lerner? I would love to say that they just offer it to me, but I have to go in there and dazzle them. I mean, they know who I am, so... Uh, Little preferential treatment because the people know my name, but right. uh, I got to go in there and uh, do my thing. So yeah, he has to work like the rest of us folks. Exactly. <laughs> um, things are getting so bad in this next spot that we're going to show um, that he actually has to sell Jeremy's sweet ride to try to make some kind of dent in the phone bill. Um, what uh, what was that spot like? I mean, it seems like it's a little bit different from the other ones. Mm -hmm. So. Things are getting heavier. Things are getting more dramatic. Yeah, uh, we kind of reached a point where uh, we wanted to teach him a lesson. So we brought this kind of slacker in to let him know that we were selling his car. And then he pops in. It's the only one, only other person in the spot other than me and my wife, uh, who was played by Janet Ulrich Brooks, who was really a wonderful actress from mm -hmm. Chicago. We met on the set, and it was just nice chemistry between us. But uh, selling the car was uh, hopefully the thing that was going to change Jeremy to start getting in touch with us. No, he did not, and <laughs> kept spending money. Oh, man, that kid, he's, he's so grounded. Um, <laughs> now, did you shoot these in Chicago or in L.A.? What? No, we shot in L.A. Okay. Uh, over a two-day period. When I first went to the audition, I thought it was going to be one spot. When I went for the callback, I thought it was three spots. When we shot it, it turned into 10 spots, maybe 11 spots. They aired nine. And uh, I thought Mindy Sterling was going to play my wife. Oh, OK. And because we had really nice chemistry, they applauded us when we finished our callback auditions. And then when I showed up on the set, there was Janet, and she was wonderful. Oh, that's so, great. Yeah, yeah, I was going to ask you a little bit about her, and we can get to that. Mm -hmm. um, Mike, I know you have questions, but I do remember, Mike, you sold your sweet ride to Michael Jackson's doctor. I did. He was a local doctor, <laughs> and he bought my Jeep because he wanted a surf vehicle. And then uh, when all that Michael Jackson stuff happened, uh, there he was in the Inquirer <laughs> driving my Jeep up to <laughs> Michael Jackson's house. And then I got calls from every news agency in the world. Um, and the car was probably worth a lot more money, right? I know. Yeah. Who knew? Yeah. Um, uh, we do have some more questions. This is an interesting one. Uh, Miso Selfie wants to know, Ken, when you're doing these spots and, and so obsessed with Jeremy, is there anybody uh, in particular that you're picturing as Jeremy? Absolutely my son. Uh, he yeah. had, has no control over him in terms of spending money. He's oh, uh, an actor, makes a lot of money, and he just keeps spending and spending, and now he's borrowing money from me since the success of the T-Mobile commercials. Oh, my gosh. So... Uh, <laughs> There's no control. When, you, you know, when you're 21, you're not answering to anyone, especially you're 21 with money. Yeah. Problem. 
He's got to put that money away, though. Oh, if I, I could know. only tell him the things that I know now. I oh. believe me. We try. <laughs> Jeremy has still not switched uh, to T-Mobile yet, and things are getting so insane in this uh, next piece that uh, your wife has to start teaching piano lessons. I mean, I know that a lot of people, this is their favorite spot. What, what do you think? I mean, do people sort of stop uh, you on the street about this one? Or? Yeah, I tell you, that I, I just love the fact that they allowed me to just not say anything and stare into the camera. Yeah. Because <laughs> you're like, like that. desperate. Yeah. And uh, there's one spot with my wife in the background, and there's another spot with me just talking about what she's doing. And it is my favorite spot. And there was a guy at Macy's, big, big football type guy. And he said, you're the guy from the T-Mobile spots? And I said, yeah. He said, piano, that's my favorite. I said, yeah, that's yeah, mine too. <laughs> yeah, and I was laughing every time I saw it when I, when I did some ADR for it. Yeah, because it's really funny because you can hear her in the background and it's that excruciating mm -hmm. noise mm -hmm. of the piano. Yeah, and it's very risky to just have like 15 seconds of just face into camera with yeah, nothing else. You know, it so, is. It's a, it yeah. is a big risk. Mike, uh, if you don't stop calling internationally, I'm going to have to start sweeping studio floors for you. <laughs> so, oh, Rebecca, I'm sorry. I, I, I was just on the phone <laughs> calling a, a, a Nigeria. Apparently, I have a distant <laughs> relative there, and, and they promised me quite the inheritance. Yeah, I will deal he, with that after the show. You won the Nigerian lottery. Uh, this is an amazingly popular ad, and that, that shot is just money. Um, our fans want to know, oh, Ken, uh, this question comes from iPhoney. Have you yourself embraced uh, the cell phone era and social media? Yeah, kind of. I'm, I'm a dinosaur when it comes to all of this stuff. I have a BlackBerry. My people want me to, do, to switch to the smartphones, but I'm an unsmart man. So my <laughs> children handle that stuff for me. I'm very, very behind the times. But I do know how to text briefly. So I will answer things with a no or a yes or yeah. and send, but uh, uh, I get panicked with the new technology. I understand. And, you that. know, they wanted to stay away from that with the T-Mobile stuff because they just felt like they didn't want older people to look too stupid. But they have a little bit of that in there. Yeah, exactly. You know? Um, so you've done a lot of television. Mm. Uh, you recently played Dr. Schneider on The Big Bang Theory in a, a scene with Howard, um, where you're caught climbing out of the window. And of course, this is so fascinating to me because you never get to see Howard's mom ever in the series, but you were her lover, apparently. Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> tell yeah. us about that experience working on such a hit sitcom. Oh, uh, it was fun. Uh, Jim Parsons, I knew from doing a commercial years ago, a FedEx commercial mm -hmm. in New York. He played my son. so. When I was on the set, he came and gave me a huge hug and, oh, my dad, uh, I had so much, you, you covered for me because I was late. And we Aww. talked about that. <laughs> and then uh, doing the show, um, it was just fun. I mean, everybody there was just so nice and just really welcomed me. And uh, the woman that plays the mother, I'll, uh, Carol Ann Susie is her name. Mm -hmm. I think that's not a secret. You never see her and she's not that fat. But uh, we had sexual relations, but it wasn't <laughs> shown. And then I was climbing out the window and caught. Yeah. And um, I had a great time. It was uh, a it was, very funny episode. Very thank cute. You. Yeah. Um, Mike, do you have a question on Big Bang Theory? Uh, we do, in fact. By the way, what I got out of that was that Jim Parsons has done a commercial, and we need to book him on commercial break. <laughs> okay, there <laughs> Let's you get go. our people working on that. <laughs> um, we have a question from uh, someone calling themselves the Jim Parsons Project. Ken, <laughs> did you know how big the Big Bang Theory was when you booked it? And conversely, when you got there, did they know how, you know, how big your career has been? Mm-hmm. Uh, I had uh, worked for um, the company before, so for the producer, uh, Chuck Lorre. So yeah. uh, I had done Two and a Half Men, and I had done Dahmer and Greg, and I had known a couple of other people on the show. Um, Wallowitz, uh, the kid yeah. that played, what's his name? Oh, I can't think of it Okay, right so now. anyway, he, uh, <laughs> turns out we had done a lottery commercial, California lottery commercial on mm -hmm. a bus. He said it was one of his first jobs. And uh, so the table read was just wonderful, and um, the head of Warner Brothers is um, uh, Joe Roth, and he had been the head of uh, Stephen Cannell Productions when I did, I was a regular on a sitcom there. 
And um, so he gave me a real nice hug and everything. It was a very warm set, and I had a great time. That's great. Um, you were known also for playing Principal Flutie on Buffy mm -hmm. the Vampire Slayer, which was a huge, huge hit cult series. Um, tell us what it was like to work with Sarah, Michelle Geller. I mean, yeah. she's, she's an amazing actress. And I think I probably worked the first day and we shot the first introduction of her character coming to my school and um, I came up with ripping her, her uh, file and then pasting it back together and dealing with her and uh, Charlie Martin Smith, the actor, I don't know if you remember who he is, he was in American Graffiti, he directed mm -hmm. the episode and um, you can tell it was going to be a big hit show. Yeah, and I mean, that show was yeah, on for a while, and, and people just watched it religiously. Did a lot of episodes, and then I was killed by hyena kids. Yeah, I, <laughs> saw, was, that, I saw that in some of the pictures. That hurt. Um, yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> um, you have done some real classics, and we can't move on from this interview without touching on Happy Days. Um, you played multiple characters. Tell us about that experience, about working with such an amazing cast, but also Back then, you could do multiple characters mm -hmm. and keep getting recast. So. Yeah, I came out from New York, and uh, I had studied with Stella Adler in New York, and I came out and a um, Jewish guy, and all of a sudden, I auditioned for, one of my first auditions was for Happy Days to play an Italian hitter, meaning a gang member, mm -hmm. and I got it, and Jerry Paris was the director, and they liked me, and so I played the opposite gang of Fonzie, then I played a member of Fonzie's gang, <laughs> and then it. I was the bigger one. The biggest one was the Rocco Malachi, the Malachi brothers, oh, with awesome. the Demolition Derby with Pinky oh, Tuscadero. Oh, I remember that. I re yeah, Pinky so Tuscadero, yes. Remember her? <laughs> yes, I do. Mike's, yeah. Mike's laughing over there because he's so over the moon that you were on Happy Days. He's so happy. <laughs> I had a Happy Days lunchbox. What do you want from him? <laughs> Mike, you were on it, right? You were on it. On Happy on. Days? Yeah, no. Well, I was five, but uh, <laughs> oh, I, I could have been. Yeah, I mean, way to make Rich, Ken feel Richie good, Cunningham Mike. Richie Cunningham wasn't much older. <laughs> yeah. I did his first movie called uh, Grand Theft Auto. He came over to me when I was on the set of Happy Days, and he said, I'm directing something, and I'd like you to be in it. So that was an offer, which was nice, and uh, I got to be in his first movie. So, um, Ronnie, I'm still available. <laughs> <laughs> Sell it. Sell it. Right, exactly. <laughs> All right, guys, it's time for Jingle Jangle. Okay, so people remember jingles more than they remember their favorite childhood cartoon. And so, Ken, what was your favorite jingle from life? Uh, when I was really young, my brother owned a deli, so there was a lot of deli food in the house, and so. I'd like to be an Oscar Mayer wiener, that's the very thing I'd like to be. Cause if I was an Oscar Mayer wiener, everyone would take a bite of me. <laughs> da -da -da. Da -da. Wonderful, bravo. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you Mike, thank you. Uh, you, I think, keep that in your fridge on a regular basis. Oh, Oscar Mayer bologna? Yeah. Absolutely. And that <laughs> jingle is also my ringtone. <laughs> <laughs> and that's Jingle Jangle, guys. Okay, chat stars, this is my favorite part of this show. This is where we take five adjectives submitted by you, the chat stars. We take those words, give them to our guest, today that's Ken Lerner, and then Ken uses those words to sell the mystery product. Rebecca, what is today's mystery product? Today is a baseball glove, and the words are, Mikey. Today's words are happy, presumably for happy days. Coolamundo. Maybe the only time we'll get to use that word. Scientific, sucky, and merry. Good luck, Ken. Okay, Ken, take it away whenever you're ready. I am happy to sell this Kula Mundo scientifically designed glove that is so big that any sucky ball that comes my way will merrily be stuck in my glove. So Merry Christmas to everyone. Gloves are available. Yes. Buy them soon. Awesome. Yay! Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You can get that glove here for $10.99 at thestream.tv. <laughs> um, so Ken, before you leave us, because it was so awesome to have you here, what's next for you? I know you work all the time, and um, I know you teach acting classes mm -hmm. too, real quick. Um, yeah, I have my own private classes that uh, I teach uh, cold reading and scene class. I teach a lot of audition technique which I find, uh, since I've worked a lot, uh, over the years I've gone through every audition possible. So I help people to understand what's 
um, appropriate and what's not appropriate are the auditions. I also teach at the New York Film Academy and um, do a lot of on-camera stuff with the students to show them how good or how bad they are. And um, you can get in touch with me at Ken uh, Lerner Studio, uh, www. whatever that is. And uh, so uh, my feeling is, is that, um, and my, my uh, catchphrase is work with a working actor, which hopefully those who work, do, and teach. If you were g could give actors advice in one sentence, what do you think is the most important thing for actors to remember when they go out for an audition? No question. The biggest thing, I think, is uh, be yourself. Yeah. Bring who you are to your readings, because that's what they're casting. Because uh, in television and film, you're not playing a 90-year-old hunchback. You're playing you. Yeah. So bring your essence, your sweetness, your personal t uh, take on life. Every, just don't be afraid of sharing who you are. Mm -hmm. I think that's the biggest thing that I can give to somebody. I think that's good advice. What's your yeah. website? Uh, www.kenlearnerstudio.com. Okay, and your Twitter is? Well, you, I think it's at Ken Lerner. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> just you, so baby. everyone knows, you can follow Ken there. And anything coming up that we need to keep an eye out for? Uh, no, just repeats of lots and lots and lots of television stuff. Okay, and, and those uh, T-Mobile spots, we'll keep following yeah, the you there. Stuff. <laughs> and I also have a Rite Aid commercial out there right now where okay. I have the flu, and um, so everyone should get their shots. Yes, definitely. Well, thank you so much for joining us. You were an amazing guest. Thank you, Ken. My pleasure. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Twitter. And for more commercial break, subscribe now.